Hey gang, back again, this time a little more caffeinated. Uh, so last, uh, the last video we did the um, pigment file, and now finally we're going to move on to the chroma charts, the last tools you're going to create before we actually start to finally start to put all this into play and uh, I can do some you know, actual instructional painting videos. So the first thing, uh, this video is going to be short. I'm just going to show you how to rule out uh, your charts in preparation to put the paint down. And then the subsequent videos, I'm going to show you how to mix all your paint. So let's get started with the tools and materials. And as I said, very short, showing you how to um, a quick uh, demo to show you how to lay out your charts. And, and that should do it at least for this video. So let's switch. Okay, uh, well, let me start with, this is what we're going for, right? This is what we are shooting for in terms of the look of the charts. Um, we're going to be doing 10 of them, so when I show you how to lay this out, you're going to need 10 individual charts. And the reason we're only doing 10 is I'm only going to show you how to mix the primary and secondary color families, right? If you remember, primary color families, yellow red, purple, blue, green, uh, yeah, that was five, secondary families. So there were five primaries, five secondaries, yellow, red, red, purple, purple, blue, uh, blue, green, and green, yellow. So we're only doing then chroma charts for the primary and secondary families, um, but you're going to have 10 of these, and, and this is basically how they're going to look. We'll walk through this more. Uh, when we actually get to mixing the charts. So you need at least, let me just put this over here. You need at least uh, 10 pieces of whatever. Uh, you know, with the, with the chroma chart and the color wheel, I cut canvas. Um, whatever you ended up using, you know, as long as it got the job done, it's fine. Uh, what I have here is um, gray cardstock. I usually buy stacks of this at Staples. Um, gray cardstock. It's uh, it's got a good weight to it, and I mean you don't need this much. I buy it because I'm always making these charts for class purposes. But I think if you go to Staples or maybe whatever, if you have a local uh, stationery or local copy place, usually they keep bins of individual sheets of paper so that you can get smaller quantity copies uh, on different colors or weights of paper. So if you want to do this option, wherever you would typically go for your copies, um, what is it, Staples? What's the other place? Um, well, wherever you might end up going, they probably have loose pieces of paper. You want to look for some type of a gray cardstock, lighter gray, better than darker gray. Um, just because you'll see what I'm going to do next to it. So you want at least 10 pieces of either canvas or cardstock or cardboard. I mean, it could be anything you want to use. These are standard eight and a half by 11 sheets. And with those 10 sheets then, so we have our 10 sheets of paper, canvas, whatever. You want your neutral gray, uh, golden neutral gray acrylic, or you could mix the acrylic on your own between white black and remember if you're going to make a neutral you want to mix a little bit of raw umber in with the black so we're going to take that acrylic if, if you're going to go the white and black and raw umber route you want to mix together get your value scale out mix an approximate five value or pick up a tube of golden neutral five acrylic and paint those 10 pieces of whatever with the neutral five. We want to start with, uh, just like we did with the color wheel and the chroma chart, we want to start with a neutral five background for this. So I have my 10 sheets coated with the acrylic and dry. Always want your glass palette. I changed the orientation here uh, from the last few um, uh, um, videos. You'll see why in a second. You need a standard size ruler, pencil, and Sharpie marker or some type of a pen or marker. So that's it. So once you have your 10 pieces of whatever, you've coated them with the five, either the neutral five purchased or the neutral five that you mixed, they are now dry. You're gonna take your ruler and run it along the top edge.
make a pencil line. So you've got a line, one ruler width down from the top. Turn it on the left side. Put the ruler on the left side. Make a line. So now I've just made two lines, one parallel to the left edge, one ruler width apart, or away from the side, left side. Uh, one parallel to the top edge, one ruler's uh, width down from the top. Take your ruler. You're going to measure over. Oops. Nine inches, marking every inch. Move down. Doesn't matter where, I'm just moving down because I'm going to make the same marks here to help me with my, keep my vertical lines nice and straight. So measure over nine inches, make the mark, mark every inch. Sorry again about the rain, a hard rain's a fall in here. Turn the paper. I've got my two marks at nine inches. I'm going to make my straight line. Before I make any of the interior lines, I'm going to measure down five and a half inches, and I'm going to mark every half inch. Half. One. One and a half. Oh, got to move. I got some glare. One and a half. Two, two and a half, three, oh, glares kill me, three and a half, four, it's killing me in my 50 year old eyes, four and a half, five, five and a half. So I've got five and a half inches measured down, a mark at every half inch. I'm going to do the same thing at the opposite end. Now I'm on the line that one of those, fir that first line or that second line that I made. Measure down five and a half inches and mark every half inch. Turn the paper back sideways at the five and a half inch mark. Connect the dots. I now have my rectangle that is nine inches wide by five and a half inches high. Now I can go through and just connect the dots. Start at the top if you want to and move on down every half inch. I should turn this over so I can slide it easier. So if you have a triangle or some kind of a right angle, you certainly feel free to use that. That will make the process go faster. Once I have all those in, turn it. Now I'll connect my dots at the one inch increments. Take your time. You don't have to be perfect, but certainly, as in any situation, the more orderly, the better. So, you will do this 10 times. Make 10 grids. Put your pencil down. Take your Sharpie marker. On the left side, the left side of the grid, 
is a scale of value. And if you remember uh, from the previous videos with the Munsell color system, we're working with 11 values. 10 is white, zero is black, there are nine grays in between. So starting from top to bottom on the left, this marks our value. Start at the top, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Those are our values. Across the bottom, we're gonna mark our degrees or numbers, increments of chroma. Chroma is the degree of uh, brightness or dullness, the intensity of the color. So this edge, top to bottom, marks value. Across, in fact, if you find that helpful, for memory purposes, go ahead and mark it. Value on the left side, chroma at the bottom. Now, the there are 11 steps in value. The chroma, we're gonna set 16 steps of chroma, but we're gonna do every other step. Uh, the fact is, when you look at the Munsell charts, there are some colors um, that go even beyond 16 steps, particularly when you deal with digital color and some other things. For our practical painting purposes, we don't need to do anything more. Trust me, I've done this for a long time. You don't need to do anything more than what I'm going to show you right here. All we're trying to do, when I pulled those charts up, is take each string, one from each of the primary and secondary families, and make a chart that shows the chromatic possibilities from strong chroma to weak chroma of each one of those families. So we don't need an extensive chart, something that will lay those, uh, those strings out in terms of their chromatic possibilities is all we need. So we're going to go then, we went from 10 to 0, right, top to bottom on the left for value. We're going to go from 0 on the left to 16 on the right, only marking every other step. So, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. The reason we're doing this is these steps are going to be, they're going to jump just enough that really you could mix in between. If you really wanted to make a full chart, you would actually do 16 incremental steps in chroma. This will all make sense when I start mixing it. You'll see shortly in the next video. But for now, this is what the charts are going to look like. 10 of them, value marked on the left from 10 to 0, chroma marked at the bottom from 0 to 16 every other step, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and, and uh, going by 2s. The other thing you can do is, and I would suggest so that you're very clear, mark each one of the 10 a particular family. Remember, we're only doing primary and secondary color families or hues. I'm gonna mark this one yellow red because that's the first chart that I'm going to do. I would recommend you do the same. But get all of them marked, yellow, yellow, red, 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 purple, etc. Primary and secondary hues, get the charts measured out, get your indications, value and chroma marked, Put your hue at the top, put those aside, take your palette. Whatever palette you have doesn't matter. We're gonna mark the palette in exactly the same way that we mark the chart. The left side is going to be value, the right side, or uh, uh, you're gonna, the left side is gonna be value and across the bottom is gonna be chroma. Now I wish I had a larger palette to do this, but I don't. Uh, the larger the palette you have, the better, because you're going to see there are going to be a lot of small increments, but I'm going to stick with this. So we go from 10. We can go ahead down here and mark 0. Right? 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Value across the left edge and 0. We've got 0, 2, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, all the way out to the edge. Uh, the reason being, again, I'll bring up one of the charts. Right. So we're going to have our neutral grays along the left edge 
And then depending on what color family we're in, what hue family, we're going to be stepping out degrees of chroma. Again, you'll see all this when we get to the next video, uh, but this at least shows you how to um, rule out your charts, 10 of them, one for the primary and secondary color families, one each. Get them marked, ruled out. Get your palette prepared. And finally, what am I looking at? 15 minutes. Uh, you know what? I'm going to cut it here because in the next video, then I will um, we'll keep all that together as far as getting your colors out and uh, showing you how to mix the first chart, first chart, which is yellow red. So that's it for this one. Keep this one nice and short. Get your materials, all your charts prepared. Have your paints um, that you use for the color wheel, for the color wheel handy, the primary and secondary families handy. And I will see you next time. Any questions, as always, uh, leave a comment, like or subscribe, or like and subscribe, all that good stuff. See you soon.